cloud. All right. Okay. All right. So I think the first one in the spreadsheet is ingrained, not ingrained. Very clearly missing an e. <laughs> Uh, any thoughts on, on this? Oh, hi, Erin. Good morning <laughs> or evening, afternoon. <laughs> we just got started, literally just uh, opened the spreadsheet and mentioned ingrained. I, I, I've seen a few people looking at Red BPF, which is their library for other purposes, which I thought was a good sign that they, um, were, you know, had designed something that's useful outside their specific use case. So it was quite good. People seem to, like people are recommending that as the best library to use for Rust BPF at the moment. I've heard, uh, it seems to be the impression I've got. So it seems quite positive. I share that impression. Yeah. And I, I feel like Rust and eBPF is still a fairly new sport, but, uh, you know, it's pretty exciting. You know, I think it's going to grow. I also like the fact that they uh, listed the clear reason of how they're different from Falco. That is always very useful during the reviews. Yeah, the Falco people seemed interested in this. So it seemed to be quite complimentary to what we... Okay, good. Oh, Chris is mentioning they'll need to relicense to uh, Apache 2. Funnily enough, I looked at... I was looking at the red BPF thing and that had just been relicensed. So it's, I guess, the ingrained I mean, part is still GPL, is it? Yeah. I mean, we could handle that on part of onboarding, kind of like we did with GRPC and, and other projects that had that issue. So I'm, I'm not too worried about it as long as they intend to do it. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? It doesn't seem to be too many people contributors in do do we care how many are there i mean i'm not even talking about diversity right this the ingrained repository lists four contributors i think this is definitely in the realm of like judgment we don't have a kind of Red BPF has got 15 though which is yeah, and I think you could make an argument that if it comes into the sandbox, it may get more attention and more contribution. Right. I agree. I think it's for sandbox, the bar is certainly a lot lower as far as variety and diversity of uh, contributors from different places. Yeah, yeah. 250 yeah. odd stars. It's definitely more than just a hobby, isn't it? Uh, yeah. The the related question that is, are we incubating red BPF or ingrained D, right? <laughs> well, I mean, in sandbox, either could happen or both. Or, I mean, I think it's like we're flexible enough that we don't have to determine in advance which parts of the project are going to be most successful or what direction it might go in. So, Maybe Red BPF will be the most successful part of it, or maybe they'll split into separate parts. I mean, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I think if it was just Red BPF being contributed, I, I might be questioning whether or not CNCF is necessarily the appropriate home for a generic eBPF part, but as part of a bigger project. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. This sounds All good right. to me. And that, oh, I guess for some of you, this might be the first time you've done Sandbox. So the way we normally do this is we put uh, votes in chat. So I will type in something like votes for ingrained and you can put your plus ones or minus ones below and Amy keeps track. And that's the way we've been doing it. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, I think the next one is Cuba Healthy. Cuba Healthy. She's coming from Comcast. Uh, 
Any comments or thoughts? I think it, you know, seems like it meets the criteria to me. Follow up for you. testing tools. Um, we have a we have a category for chaos testing, but I don't think that we have a category for testing like a broader category. This one is synthetic tests, so I don't know if it's worth introducing um, a broader category for all the testing tools that come to Sandbox or. Hmm. This strikes me again as another one of those projects that uh, you know I was kind of started thinking about as like ecosystem projects where it's a really cool thing it's great it's not at the same kind of scale and importance as something like Kubernetes or Prometheus or you know blah 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 um, but that's no reason at all not to pull it into sandbox yeah all right. Any other comments? Or should we move I mean, it has somehow a healthy has, number of contributors. Which yeah, I was just going to say it has somehow 57 contributors, which is really impressive. Yeah, nearly nine, nearly a thousand stars, which is, yeah, it's definitely got some and an end user project. Yeah. All right. Votes for Cuba Healthy. Wonderful. The next one is K8GB. Another end user project. Oh, is that what? It's supposed to be a South African bank. Uh, okay, that's cool. And what did they say about their thinking for contributing? Looks like they've been featured on some, you know, community shows and things. Looks like they're, you know, interested in engaging with the community. Do you think there's any, uh, any relationship with the Kubernetes project that we should be, you know, does it make sense for this to be a separate project? They seem to be aiming at uh, multi-cluster. I, I, I remember hearing about them in a SIG multi-cluster session, but I never did in more than that. And again, there's no reason why, you know, a, a sandbox project couldn't form stronger links with the Kubernetes project if that's successful. So, okay, any other comments on that one? I will put both. Okie doke. The next one is vineyard. I have to make myself say vineyard and not vineyard. <laughs> uh, which is coming in from Alibaba. Any, anyone got any knowledge of this one? Any comments? Yeah, we uh, reviewed it on the storage SIG. It's interesting it took us kind of a while to understand how it even related and would be helpful um to cncf but it's certainly is different than anything we have so i think it has some notoriety there yeah i know i know a little bit background of, of, of this project it's actually i think uh, highly uh, related to the machine learning and big data 
uh, field, which is kind of, uh, they don't have similar project actually in Sensei for now. Uh, if we have Kubi flow, it will be actually, I think, uh, can drop into the same category. Yeah, I mean, honestly, off the cuff, when we reviewed it in the storage SIG, we were like, this feels more like an Apache project um, because of that machine learning aspect. But I do know that that is growing in intensity across Kubernetes users. So um, I think it could go Chris, either way. Uh, Chris has just mentioned, I was gonna, uh, gonna ask this, there's another Linux Foundation uh, another Linux Foundation foundation. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've tautological, but uh, yeah. It's really up to all y'all to decide. You can make a recommendation that, hey, maybe you're a better fit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely you know, seeing, there. this is like a really superficial look, but I'm seeing things in there about Tensor. And that does make me think, is this, is this the best home? I don't know if it's the best home. Um, Cause that was our first impression as well. Alex and I is that, huh, it seems like it would fit better in the Apache foundation, but. Just looking at the uh, comments about how it's aligned with cloud native computing. Uh, I mean, do, do, but do we not want this kind of project? I mean, you know, it's like large scale data is a cloud native problem. It's just, I mean, I get we've been like kind of neglecting it, but I don't see that that's something that we necessarily want to continue to put into other places necessarily. I mean, I think that, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, it seems, Saying saying that all of it should live in Apache or somewhere else seems a bit weird to me. Like as if No, I and that's kind of why we were on the fence. Like, you know, there hasn't been a strong focus on actually managing and using data at scale yet, right? We've been more focused on the infrastructure components compared to act, you know, how data flows in and out and manage and analytics, everything else. So I think that would be and to to Liz's point at the beginning of the year, uh, focusing on what our strategy should be, I think this is kind of where we're trending into new territory. And maybe this is a good step in that direction to open it up. Mm. And that could be a really good thing. I mean, if we had a uh, like momentum towards more of these kind of projects, then maybe that would well, is there always going to be a giant gaping hole in the fact that we don't have Kubeflow? Uh, so uh, looking at uh, the getting started an installation, I don't see um, anything related to like big data as such, right? Um, it's just they provide an API and they give an engine. And so it's, it's an object manager. Um, and it, it, the name also says Live Vineyard. Um, so it's not like a standalone framework for ML or anything like that. So there's like one piece, one component. So it doesn't feel like a big thing. It's actually, I think, more like a plugin, for example, to Kubernetes. So in that case, Kubernetes can be used to manage the uh, large scale data, which can be used for a machine learning scenario. That is my understanding on this right. project. Correct. That's correct. That your understanding is correct. And uh, the last column, they, they goofed up a little bit. Uh, they, they have references to Fluid, uh, which is another one, which is, la which is later, uh, which is another contribution that they are trying to make. Oh, I missed what that Fluid thing was about. Okay, so that, that's a different project altogether, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it comes later. But, but it, it does seem to do like uh, in-memory uh, data set bookkeep bookkeeping and integrating with the Kubernetes scheduler for right. you know, some sort of topology aware uh, data, data handling.
Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we should ask a few more questions to them through SIG storage. I guess, um, yeah, I'm wondering whether, well, first of all, it does look like that column P is a block copy. So perhaps there's some missing information there. Right. And I wonder whether there's a question that says, I, I, personally speaking, I, I'm kind of open to the idea that we go in this direction, but I'm not 100% sure whether if we do this today, is that the best thing for this project? You know, will having this project in the sandbox be the best way to make it successful and maybe it is maybe it is i don't i don't know just don't know yeah um the, we have the, the only... recording from sig storage as well of their presentation to the group if that i can find that and share that out yeah uh erin is this written using c plus plus or is it written using python both which is something that is kind of weird so it's a it's mixture of Python and C plus plus. Okay. Interesting. You probably just have the Python to integrate with pandas, and it looks like the core is. No, no, that's it's. I, I it's apparent. It seems to be more than that because they're talking okay. about using S three FS as a Python file system interface for S three. So it seems to provide S three bindings and PyBind for seamless operations in C++ C++ and Python, which is, so it's a kind of, it's, it looks more integrated than I thought, which is weird. I haven't looked at it in detail, but I was just looking at that just now. I was thinking that's a little bit weird. Do we want to wait to vote till I can, you guys can review the SIG storage um, presentation. I think, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, Harry, would it make sense for you to have a chat with them and, and just sort of sound out why they're thinking CNCF rather than something more machine learning oriented? Be interesting to get a bit more background on that. And uh, maybe they could fix column P. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I can exactly. Column fix column P. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we will not vote on that one on Vineyard. We will hold them over to next time. Great. The next one in the list is HE3 local. Is there some like fun way of pronouncing that that I'm missing? <laughs> I actually raised a comment regarding to this project. This has I... no stars. Super new, it got created in March. Um, I mean, literally the guy hasn't even started his own project. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's even listing Sandy Ali as a maintainer. So I'd say it's, it's something wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you, that, it's a bit of the 12 commits, most of them are modifying the changelog and the readme and the roadmap. So I guess maybe it's just created, yeah. Yeah, maybe the, the person who did this did a lot of work offline and then committed it all in one commit. Or maybe it was committed when the repository was created <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, I feel like we would like to see a little bit more community momentum on this project before we were to accept it to Sandbox. I feel a tweet coming on about starring at, le at least starring your own project. <laughs> All right. I I'm assuming we don't need to vote on that one. Do we need to vote? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say, actually, Amy, were you marking us waiting for more community momentum? We don't want to see it in the spreadsheet for, I don't know, what, six months? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, moving on to Quark, Quark containers. I feel like I've heard of this from somewhere, but I can't think why. I, 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 um, I, I 
took a look, I tweeted about it a few weeks ago when it came up on the application because it was kind of interesting. It's, I'll be uh, in there. <laughs> so you might have seen that. It's basically um, a kind of different set of trade offs to GVisor for doing via, uh, isolation by reflecting syscalls back into the host. Um, so you basically don't run Linux pretty much at all in the guest. You just use IOU ring and shared memory to move syscall, filtered syscalls into the host. I didn't look at it in a lot of detail, but um, it seems a definite kind of uh, for higher performance than GVisor or QMU. Um, potentially, um, at least according to their initial measurements um, and faster startup times. I think as a sandbox, it's, I mean, it's not got a lot of traction um, and it's very new, but um, I think it probably kind of passes the sandbox bar. Justin, 17 comments total. Yeah, three, um, maybe three it watches. Quite pass the yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. I don't know. I, 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 I think I do remember you tweeting about it, and I remember thinking, oh, it's actually an interesting idea. But I do feel like this is very low in terms of engagement. It's quite again, so the project we just created in, in March, it's, um, it's very new as well. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like we'd want to hold up a similar bar as we did the last project and pushing it out six months just to see more of community engagement around it. If yeah. Yeah, I'm inclined to to agree. I, and I think the you know their reasoning for why they want to join the CNCF it. it it slightly reads as to make our project famous, um, which I I wouldn't would like to compare it with the previous one because it's got many thousands of lines more code. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, they, it is uh, weirdly all in one commit. Like there's clearly this commit called add source code. Uh, with 542 files and 117,000 editions is it uh, is a, a is just a little bit weird. Like there's no previous Git history, but it is a one gigantic commit of a lot of stuff. <laughs> Ricardo, there are six flavors of quark they could use for a rename. <laughs> there's space for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Um. Would anyone particularly feel strongly that we should go to a vote? Or... I, I, I would like to see the Git history from previously because I just don't, I, I, I don't believe. Sorry, I'm just looking at this commit. I'm still scrolling. <laughs> 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 um, it would be nice to have some actual broken down history for this commit. Yeah, I, I... it's. Like yeah. I can't believe someone just made that from from nothing on a on a on a March afternoon. He types really, really quickly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we should wait for a bit more momentum. Everyone happy? If we move on to Trickster. Tricksterproxy.io. This is about as far as I got in the uh, in the spreadsheet beforehand, so yeah. It would be really interesting to know what the SIG observability folks think of this, but it's pretty momentum-y. 1.3 thousand stars. Chris is saying it's a Comcast project. Okay. Yeah, it came out of Comcast and it looks like they moved it to another GitHub org. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, I am. Yeah, the only the question name? I had was um, they, they list four primary functions of their stuff, and I wasn't too, uh, I couldn't figure out like how those four are related to each other or whether they put all the four in the same bucket. Did anybody feel into that? I didn't get that far. Dims. Yeah, I mean, as, as if I recall, it was just basically something they built to help deal with caching a bunch of Prometheus instances. And it looks like they've kind of expanded it to other uh, time series servers mm -hmm. from, from the looks, looks of it right now. They, they do say that Cortex and Thanos mo have cache layers modeled after this, which does beg the question of like, could this become a generic caching there for those projects so they don't have to implement their own and would that make sense yeah that would be interesting because like, that would that would definitely be an interesting outcome if this was to become a, just a generic caching layer, layer for other, other projects uh, they definitely passed the bar uh, to yeah. take a vote right his metal band name. Shall we do votes for Trickster? Uh, if I can smell them, Trickster. Okay, and the next one is SSVM, which is a kind of, is it a WASM runtime? Yeah, it's a WASM runtime. I think it's actually by some of the old JBoss folks are involved. Well, I think we've been saying that this is going to be a bit of a hot topic this year. So, uh, yeah, yeah, this seems to uh, consolidate that opinion. 700 odd stars. I, I didn't attend, but it was presented at uh, Sigfront in early March. I didn't attend. Uh, that specific one. I don't particularly remember it being one of the ones that um, I know Ricardo Aravina mentioned a few, you know, at the TSC meeting, but. No, this is not, I had not heard of this one before. It's not one of the. They, they came later. Uh, they came after uh, Ricardo presented at, at the TOC. Okay. Which is, you know, it's fine. Okay. If, one one thing Aaron, that thank, thank you now if Erin is dropping are we still core it Amy not when you okay. drop no <laughs> okay but we can do one more before we can do one right. more yeah, right. yeah 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 so one observation on this one was in the product description it says that they are trying to define two extensions uh, and they would like to use CNCF to be able to drive. Uh, them to specification as default implementations or um, turn it into a specification, uh, which is fine. Uh, it's just that that that's what they, they are here for. Uh, they are here to, so they can use uh, their CNCF presence to be able to of some stuff. I have reservations about SSVM as the name, given that the company behind it is Second State. I feel like that might be a bit close. Yeah, I mean, we could push in the rename, but. Uh, there's an awful lot of other projects in their GitHub org, as many of which are also called SSVM. It's very unclear to me what might be part of this and what's not. Okay. So maybe that's that's two questions for them. One is, 
the name, the second would be exactly what they're contributing. Um, I mean, I, th I, I feel quite positive towards the general idea of the project, but I'm a little bit, yeah, TOC would like more clarification, sounds right. And specifically to, to make sure they would be okay with a, a change of name. Yeah. And then when it comes to this thing about standardizations, I mean, we, there's creating standards through, you know, building code, but we don't want to be a standards organization. But they awesome. could do that with, you know, through, through kind of collaboratively building implementations and push any specs to the what's that thing begin with J? JDF. Yeah. What's the but what's the status of WebAssembly and Learners Foundation? Because there was another conversation about that, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I mean there's some work going on there, but I don't know where that that is going to end up. You know, there's like I view SSVM as a, as a runtime, right? So whether what specs they implement and so on, I think is a whole other problem, and that will pro the specs will probably be defined in another body. Um, anyway yeah. Yeah. from my perspective okay but when i talk to them in depth i think they just wanted to contribute the runtime ssvm and if you look at the dependency chain it, it's fairly simple they don't drag in um much at all so um fairly simple okay i guess that just leaves the name yeah, I'll have to talk. I'll talk to our legal folks quickly. I don't know if it's going to be an issue. It is a little bit close to the second state name, but I don't know if that will be an issue. It's more for comfortable. Um, I, I feel that, a little bit like that's too, you know, it, it, what does SSVM stand for? Oh, it stands for something. <laughs> it will, yeah. you know. Super, super VM. I don't know. Something. Super special <laughs> virtual <laughs> Uh, they should use a W at the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, there's a couple. So I don't know, you know, we have to be sensitive time because people are dropping off. So I, I could reach out to them and ask for a rename and talk to our lawyers. The question is, if you want to, do you want to vote or wait until that topic is done? Because we could vote and say like, hey, we're comfortable as long as they change your name uh, or come back, you know, two months later or whenever we meet yeah. Uh, again. The other thing I'm slightly wondering about is, uh, I'm just noticing that they have 11 people in the organization and I guess they all work for Second State and there are 11 contributors. So mm. maybe it would be interesting to, I, I'm not, Yeah, it, it looks interesting. I'm not saying that. I I feel like we could hold a could hold a vote, but uh, perhaps it'd be better to yep. get clarification on those things first. Sounds yeah. good. Yep. All right. I think at this point I should probably drop off because um, I'm not sure we'll get through the next one. So, how many did we get through, Amy? Um, let me check. Eight. So we, uh, we can That's push towards being able to do another one. Um, yeah. Probably going to look for the 27th of April. Okay. Unless there's anything anyone particularly thinks we really, really need to prioritize talking about on the rest of the spreadsheet. All right. Apologies to the uh, to the folks we didn't get to, but I guess we, we held an, an extra meeting this month to yes. try and get through these. <laughs> and we have a plan moving yeah. forward. So yeah. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Thanks everyone. See you next week, I guess. Bye everyone.